like the Isle of Misfit Toys. <laughs> it's a place where a lot of people that were probably misfits in high school, junior high school, even if they're not metalheads, come and hang out and feel welcome and get along. And that's actually the best part of it to me because being someone that has liked a lot of experimental and heavy music and like punk when I was younger and some goth stuff and metal all through the years, there were never a lot of places to hang out and, and as a teenager you're the outcast, right? But now we've come and created this place that's uh, very welcoming to people who were maybe the weirdos when we were younger and we're the cool kids now, so. <laughs> I've been drinking at Lucky's for about six years now. You can roll in any degenerate night and uh, catch us here fucking getting loud, getting fucking crazy. It's like no other place. And it definitely serves like a niche that, at least in this neighborhood, was never served. You know, every you go up and down Fifth Avenue and all these places, like every other place is the same yuppie bar. This is its own fucking its own idea, its own fucking place. And it gives people who, I guess their whole lives were the outcasts or misfits a place to be together. You can come here as, as you are, whoever you are, and I feel like you'll leave with a friend, like having made a friend and having learned about maybe something that you didn't know about. People here are people who have never fit in anywhere at all whatsoever, and Melody has made it a very, very nice place for everybody to feel comfortable and to find a family to fit in somehow even though none of us never really fit in anywhere and it's been kind of brilliant you never know who you're gonna meet everyone who you do meet is kind of insane just like you so we all kind of fit in and we all kind of form a family around this absolute vision of insanity it's insanity it's insanity it's brilliant Jeff, who was my actual boyfriend at the time, um, he was the manager at Webster Hall and I was bartending and when I lost my job, he really wanted to talk about the possibility of us opening our own bar. There wasn't many, you know, metal places to hang out or even rock and roll places where we felt comfortable or our friends did either, you know, so it was kind of our dream to make this happen for people like us, people into music and kind of the outcasts, I guess, you know, of the norm. So we, we felt this place was very necessary. That's how it all happened. There was no other place like it. I talked to a lot of people and, and tried to think of ways to come up with money. And it wasn't that easy. And having no savings and really struggling just to make ends meet, I said, you know, this is impossible. And then I met a guy who owned a bar and he told me he opened that bar with credit cards. He didn't have any money, his first bar. And I, a light bulb went off in my head and I was like, I'm gonna open a metal bar with fucking credit cards. So I opened up a bunch of credit card accounts. I had really good credit at the time. I took out all these credit cards and I just started writing myself credit card checks, right? I guess I wrote myself $70,000 in credit card checks. But still, like finding a place where we could afford the rent, I didn't know if it would work, you know? Like we're opening a metal bar in Park Slope, you know? It's crazy, that's a crazy idea. But I had a lot of friends so I thought, that, you know, we can do this. But just getting licensing and learning how to open a bar, any bar, is really hard. So I did a lot of research, I read a lot of books. When we finally opened, we were so broke. I actually threw an illegal birthday party in there right before we were able to open. And I had everyone I know bring me bottles of liquor for my birthday and then I charged them for drinks. <laughs> And that's how we were able to pay our rent on the space that month because Jeff had quit his job in order to build the space and I was trying to pay the rent on the bar space and our apartment on my one job so it was impossible. So we managed to get through that last few weeks and then we got our liquor license um, on Christmas Eve which was crazy, 2003. It was like the most amazing Christmas and we opened right before um, New Year's. And then New Year's Eve we made all the money we needed to pay our rent on January 1st. It was that close. So it was totally crazy. And at first it was fine, and we didn't have a lot of problems with the neighborhood because it was still shitty over there. There were drug dealers on the block, and we kind of chased them off because there was, we had light and people and loud metalheads and dudes with mohawks and you know dancing around out front. And 
and now it's like yuppie crazy over there. Now I have no problem with gentrification. I think it's a good thing. I didn't, you know, worry about walking home late at night. Women felt better coming to the bar by themselves. There's a lot of good things about it. A lot of cool restaurants open. Other bars opened in the neighborhood and we got spillover and all kind of had, you know, a little help with each other. But they started to call 311 on us all the time. Our next door neighbor called the liquor authority on us and tried to tell them we were serving underage people, which we were not, because I'm really crazy about not doing that. And um, tried to get us in trouble. And you can call 311 in this city anonymously, which I think is bullshit, because it could be the same two people calling over and over again. And they don't, there's no way for them to know that. But if they get over 10 to 15 um, 311 calls on a place, they send all the departments in to raid you and basically give you a really hard time. So we started getting hit with the health department, the fire department, the DEP, um, and getting fined and fined and fined until we couldn't, we almost had to close the business down. Before that we had bans, we couldn't have bans anymore because we got a thousand dollar noise violation. Uh, 9.30 p.m. on a Saturday night, which is insane, because you could hear it from right outside the door. And then, you know, we started to talk about maybe having to move. And, um, but we didn't have the money. Anyway. There's nowhere else to go. Like, when I'm an old school metalhead. I'm like 50 years old now. For like a long time in the middle, there was like nothing to do. So I'd have to go find places to go and they just didn't, they didn't fill the void. It's like everything we grew up listening to. Kind of retirement home for metalheads. It's where old metalheads go to fucking, at the pasture. I, I don't know what I'd do without this place. It's a badass place. I go to a lot of different fucking bars for different reasons, to shoot pool this. But I always come back here, man, because it's the shit, man. It, it really is. Like, I don't know what else to say about it. Jeff, Melody, fucking solid people. You don't, you don't find people like that, you know, in, in your normal walks of life. So when you, when you find people like that, and it's a really comfortable place to come to, it's home. I, you know, it's fucking home. You know, a few years ago, there was a big crash, and a lot of people weren't coming out anymore, and we were really struggling. There was no way to get loans. There was no way, it wasn't like I could write credit card checks again, like that was done. So I really, for a little while there, I thought we might have to close down um, because we weren't making any money over there. We were making enough money to pay the bills and they say in New York City that's success, right? But there was never any money left over at the end of the month and anytime there was, the refrigerator would break, the ice machine would break, the, like the DJ console would break every single time. So we would never have any money left over. We really wanted to save money to to, to do this, right? So I continued to rack my brain and Jeff, you know, tried to get a loan, no one would give him money. I managed to get a loan, but only for what I thought was probably about a third of what we needed. It turned out to be more like a quarter of what we needed. I started to approach people that I knew believed in this place and believed in us. I finally managed to get the money from a couple of investors. It was real last minute stuff. Everything's always last minute. Uh, we had been looking for a space, we found this space, we were going back and forth trying to work the lease out for six months. One of our investors fell through right when we were about to sign the lease, then we didn't have the money. I was pretending like we were still going to sign the lease because I was hoping someone else would come through with, with another $50,000 like out of the blue. It was really stressful and like... Then they told me they were going to start showing this place and I had a heart attack and right at that moment one of our bartenders borrowed $50,000 from his father and that's how we, we managed to get in here at like the last possible minute. So it was real sweat fest. People were like really into it, you know, like totally like, yeah, you're going to do this, it's going to happen, we, there has to be a lucky 13. So that was hard, but we got through it and there was so much support and love from so many people. Jeff can build anything, so that was going to be his job. So when we found the space, I put him to work on the building and I went to work on the licensing. Jeff basically built it from, I guess, from scratch, yeah. I mean, a new spot, definitely. This was an old auto shop, basically. It was nothing. It was like a shell. And they built it all up and, and now if you see inside obviously you'll see it's, it's amazing. Jeff actually built this bar with his bare hands like this this whole space that you're seeing was nothing. He actually did man he did he did it him and Louie I used to ride my bike over here and bullshit with him while they were building the bar they built it from fucking scratch. We were here from last Memorial Day, almost like a fucking year ago, when he started building it. We went straight through the summer, like every fucking day. And each week I came by, I was like, 
Wow, he's getting more and more fucking done. Jeff has like a vision, man. When he sees shit that he knows what he wants, he just fucking does it. I admire that in somebody. You know, there's no laziness in that motherfucker. Every day he's out doing some shit to either promote this place or the other place. And, you know, he don't give up. He just, he's a fucking, he's a solid dude, man. The guy's super talented, very creative, has a, has a really cool vision on things. And he showed it pretty much with the making of this place, so. I'm, I'm grateful to be even working here. Like, this, this is a cool place to work in. I mean, we couldn't have done this without him. I don't know how much more money it would have cost us if he didn't build this place himself. It was an empty, raw space. And it was like I could do whatever I wanted to in here because was, there was nothing in here. So it was nice to come in here with a blank slate and just kind of go crazy, you know? So it was a lot of fun building the bar from scratch and stuff like that, putting exactly what I wanted to in it. It was awesome. I love doing it. It is a feat to behold if you haven't been there. Where the fuck are you? And why are you not here? We have... Dancers. Go-go girls. Go-go dancers. Half-naked chicks. Pole dancers. Got to do this, got to find a thrill. And every day you'll be for them to die of the joke. Talk a lot from how to bend and what a fucking job. I'm the one to feel without a world to be told in the books. In a box. The same stuff we used to have in the old location, which would be lots of metal, uh, jukebox, sometimes we have DJs. We have go-go girls. In the beginning, we didn't have dancers, but I used to be an exotic dancer. So I really wanted to have that element, bring it into this, and be one of the first places that had metal and hot dancers together. So that was something I really wanted to do. My, my partner wasn't really convinced at first, so I had to sell him on it. Then we installed a pole on the bar at the old spot. About, it was probably about a year after we opened and started to add that element. And the first girls we got were not so great. <laughs> you know, and, but over the years we came, became known for it. So now we get some really major, beautiful girls, pole teachers even, people that can really dance, do tricks, girls that also work at real strip clubs come here and dance also, um, even though they don't have to take out their boobs and stuff, I understand that they, they do pretty well uh, tips-wise here, so. And we have them dancing to Slayer, so it's awesome. <laughs> and then we have shows um, also in the back, uh, back here, we have shows. So we're having um, lots of metal, some rock, some, we've had some punk. Um, we're gonna be having some hardcore. That's not my favorite genre of music, but there is uh, a need for a little bit of it, so we're going to have a little bit of that. Burlesque shows here also a couple times a month on Mondays and um, that's a carryover from the old spot but now we have a real stage so we're looking into finding some um, better talent, better hosts and bigger burlesque um, acts now that we have a, a better space, something we're working on now. all night. Got a $6 beer shot special all night long. PBR and a shot of well whiskey. Go and get yourself. No matter what you're into, who you are, you'll uh, be able to make friends, have a good time. If you're into heavy, awesome music and you just want to hang out with a really good group of people, you can have it here. And you know what, everyone here is cool as shit. As long as you're cool as shit, not a douchebag, you're gonna have an awesome time here. Yeah, I mean, 
You mean your second family here for the most part? That's what it comes down to. Everyone here at Lucky 13s is my second family. Like, no matter what, if I'm having a exactly. bad day at work, I come to Lucky's. In a matter of a half an hour, my day is done, and, you know, I'm just having a good, good bunch of laughs. There's a lot of good people here. You just come here with an open mind and have a good time, and that's it. That's why you come back. It's an adventure. You know, you have to be open-minded. You need to be ready to come here. You need to be ready to, you know, be able to, just to take a walk on your wild side. There's always friends that I bump into. Like, you know, it's a pretty friendly crowd, a common crowd. So you're always bound to bump into someone that you know. There's not too many bars I love going to that often, but this is one of the few places. I mean, I have no complaints about the bars. It's just, it's just a fucking awesome place. Greatest fucking horror movies and exploitation playing at all times is pretty awesome. That's the 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 hook for me with these the movies. I'd come here and see some movies on screen and go out and buy them right then, right there. Keep in mind, whenever I try to pitch Lucky 13 to someone who's not familiar with it, I say there's metal, there's really horrible horror movies on, or, you know, random stuff on the television, and there is dancers. But people get the illusion that, you know, maybe this is kind of a place where it's not for everyone. I think that Lucky 13 is great, and that's why I stayed for as long as I did, because I really love the fact that anybody can come and feel welcome as scary as somebody maybe looks or appears like everyone here wants to be like accepted as something and i think it's really great and just seeing the the people that aren't metalheads come and be welcomed no matter what they look like and like say you know i'm not really into this music but this place is so cool and these people are really welcoming and i love the vibe here and that's just been great i love it i think it's great i, I do this as a labor of love i don't know if it'll ever make me any money so I still bartend here. Bartending is how I make money here. Um, maybe one day, maybe one day we'll make money here. I don't know, but that would be cool. <laughs> but it's definitely a labor of love. When you tell people about it, they're kind of, kind of like, I don't know if I should approach it. I don't know if I should uh, go there because it's not my scene. But you find more and more there's a good mixture of metalheads and a good mixture of you know, people who are not really metal. I'm not a metalhead. I don't consider myself a metalhead. All different walks of life and all different age groups. Uh, you know, we have 21 year olds that hang out here that hang out with 50 something year olds. You know what I mean? So it's a great mix of people, black, white, Spanish. I mean, it's, you know, all different types of people. Name, which is great. It's just a welcoming place. It's a, it's a fun place to be in. The staff is really cool. The people that work here are awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really grateful because we've ha we have a following that's like a family here. It's like a family in a way that I never expected. Everybody always jumps to conclusion when it comes to a metal bar, but we always keep things safe and we're always making sure everybody's having a good time and a good experience. One of the things I love is that people feel like they're coming home when they come here. And a lot of people have said that to me, like, this is my home. And that's really special. It's one of the places where I know that I can always come here and I can always hang out with somebody whenever I feel like, you know, I'm bored at home and there's a place I can go to kind of like cheers. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen here. And the moment that you walk in, there's so much going on and the loud music. For some people, they're not used to seeing, you know, the dim lights, the red, the, the loud metal music, screaming. It's brutal, it's crazy. You have these people in like leather jackets and vests and big beards and piercings and tattoos. So you get a little overwhelmed at first, but you know, once you sit down and order your drink and you, know, you really take in everything, we're all just big giant teddy bears. You know, we just want to have a great fucking time and get a little wild and wasty pants. So we're all here to have a good time together. Well, it's simple. This is what my living room would look like if I had a bigger place, period. Well, if you show up and you fucking see me, I'll buy your first fucking drink.